Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about the top three best 10GB NASes of 2018. Okay, so mentioned in previous videos, 10 gigabit Ethernet or 10GBE is massive in 2018. It has just got bigger and bigger because it has become more affordable and affordable. So as so many of you out there, be you home or business users, have been considering the jump into 10 gigabit Ethernet. I can understand the appeal. I made the jump myself for two and a half years ago. And when I did it, it still cost a lot more than it does now. As much as five, six, seven years ago, it would have cost you 10,000 and above to upgrade just a small three to four PC setup to 10 gigabit Ethernet with switches and cables and update cards and stuff like that. Whereas now you can do it for literally hundreds of pounds. So there are great solutions that were released this year and indeed last year for 10 gigabit Ethernet that are still incredibly affordable and some of the best. This is my cat Tammy. She's not that excited about 10 GBE. Shocking. Have a read of that? Nothing. So why should someone consider 10 GBE? So real quick, before we talk about the top three, well, first and foremost, the size of data has just been going mental. There have just been bigger and bigger files for home and business users. We've got mobile phones that are producing photos that are 10, 25 and above megabytes per pic. On top of that, with 4K recording uh, mobile phones and technology in general pumping out massive raw files. The ability to interact with, edit or even view larger files over a standard one gigabit Ethernet connection can be very, very difficult indeed and hence why the attractiveness of upgrading to 10 GBE is just out there now. Moreover, more hardware vendors, and I'm including the very latest Mac Mini, have got 10 gigabit options on their devices. And I don't think it's going to be that much longer before we start seeing home multimedia devices supporting this new, of oh, this new, uh, 10 times normal Ethernet speeds in the home or business environment. Um, lots of people utilize it for photo and video editing environments, which we've got a whole different section focused on and at the same time with dense 4k media being accessible and editable over the network thanks to Final Cut Pro and Elements and DaVinci all supporting network uh, drives for editing it is again very appealing to make the switch to 10 gigabit ethernet now once again just before we go to the top three it's worth mentioning a few parameters here first and foremost this isn't going to be about only things released this year I'm opening this up to the very best 10 GBE NAS is to buy here at the end of the year, and at least one of these was in fact released last year. Second point, I'm only focusing on desktop devices because 10 GBE rack mount has been around for a long time, and also rack mount isn't that affordable. So we're trying to stick it within the affordable area for most home and business users, hence why we're focusing on desktop. Lastly, there are two kinds of 10 gigabit Ethernet, SFP, fiber, and 10G base T, which is copper. Now, fiber is great. It covers huge distances, but it is not affordable. And secondly, it's always been around and it has not really dropped in price. Whereas copper has become very vogue, very cool. It's great for smaller distances, up to about 20 meters, and it's backwards compatible with typical RJ45 1 GBE. I don't have a cable to hand, but normal LAN cables that we use in our devices. That's why I'm focusing just on this kind of connectivity. So, without further ado, let's make our way into the top three NASs that feature 10 GBE to buy right now. So in first place, it is a QNAP that was released part of the way through this year, the TVS 951X. There are a lot of QNAP um, kind of mixtures of hard drives and SSD based NASs, and they've got three of these nine bay NASs out there. But what made this one appealing is firstly, the price tag at just over £630 without the VAT. And again, span.com, they know they're doing. But on top of that, it was the so many boxes were ticked in this box, in, in this NAS, where so many different users could take advantage of it. It is primarily, in my opinion, designed for photo video editing users, but it still has great access for both um, home multimedia users and business users looking for a file management system. It arrives with five hard drive bays and four SSD bays, thereby enabling SSD caching, which means that you can install SSDs inside those bays to greatly assist read and write on the hard drives. Alternatively, you can create a completely separate storage pool between the hard drives and the SSD, and then access the SSD 
via 10 gigabit ethernet for live editing of files, which then can then be moved onto the hard drives, thereby improving your workflow. A lot of you photo and video editors out there, they have two or three people working on a project, so you've got raw archive footage in the hard drives, move over what you need to use onto the SSDs automatically or manually, you then edit those files, close the project, then it can be moved automatically or uh, manually onto the archive hard drives where it can then metadata can be created, it can be distributed by the network and the internet and basically your, your product can be packaged for sharing to anyone you want to share with, guest users and admins alike. On top of that, it's got an Intel based CPU, the 36, uh, 3865U, it's a dual core CPU at 1.8 gigahertz, not a hugely powerful one, but it supports things like Plex, DLNA playback, and I believe even 4K, but don't hold me on that one, I might be wrong. Um, it also arrives with an HDMI port on the rear, so you can connect uh, a keyboard and mouse via USB and a monitor, and have a standalone surveillance solution, standalone media solution, Plex fiber HDMI, or even container station and Linux station to have a standalone PC, which then has 10 GBE connectivity, thanks to their network um, switch built in. It's got two gig of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded to eight, and the system arrives with two years of manufacturer's warranty. It isn't a very, to me, appealing looking device. It is a beast, it is a monster, it is a box covered in drives, but it is definitely an effective 10 GBE NAS. And again, at 600 NICA, there are thereabouts without that and without the hard drive or SSD media. You are looking at a very, very functional and able 10 gigabit ethernet solution that covers a number of bases for such an affordable price tag. And remember, you don't have to fully populate this. You can just add drives as you need them and expand the RAID accordingly. Same goes for these SSDs. It is a great little NAS and hence why it's my pick for the best um, in, in, the, in first place of my top 10 GB NASes of 2018. Now in second place, a common brand I talk about here on this YouTube and of course on NASCompares.com. What I talk about here is the Buffalo Terror Station series. And for me, they have, like the last year to 18 months, they have done an incredible job of not only creating a great 10 gigabit, 10 gigabit ethernet product, but packaging it beautifully to suit different needs. This is another NAS where much like the TVS 1282 we talked about in the previous video, this arrives in different versions that can be tailored to different needs. First and foremost, this device arrives empty or pre-populated depending on the one you look at. So you can get the device with hard drives of your choosing inside and save money. And these will be NAS hard drives, either Seagate Iron Wolf or WD Red, depending on the unit you go for. And these can be enterprise level drives as well. On top of that, it has got a 10 GB base T port on the rear, as well as one gigabit ethernet as well, so you can pick between them. But where things really get interesting is the software included, because the Terra Station arrives as a two bait, a four bait, a six bait, which has got a hardware RAID controller inside, we'll talk about that another time, and an eight bait. On top of that, there is a rack mount solution as well. That is the Terra Station series. But not only is there that your Buffalo's own software, but you can also get a Windows storage server version. And this device gives you great support of Windows Server. It arrives with the license inside. You can have as many license users as you want. And instead of using a, um, a NAS software you're not familiar with, arrives with the Windows Server software. Windows Server 2016 to be precise, and there are 2012 versions out there as well if you want them. So instead of having to learn a new OS and how it works, if you already use Windows Server or your experience is mostly Windows related platforms such as Windows 10, you have now got software that's far more catered to that operation environment. And you can basically configure and utilize your server and file management with the Windows Server array and all its support of VMs and iSCSI and um, supported Mac Drive targets, that sort of thing, inside this device. But once again, you don't have to do that. You can go for the Buffalo one, which has got Buffalo software. It costs a little bit less, and you still have three years of manufacturer's warranty, that metal chassis, real enterprise-level design. It arrives with an Intel Atom-based CPU inside and a DDR4 ECC memory in the case of those Windows storage server devices. But I know some of the other Terra stations, the non-Windows ones, also have that same memory. This, that with that three years warranty, there's also advanced replacement options and non-return options, which is a unique thing to Buffalo 
where when you have a broken drive, you don't have to send the actual physical drive back. Maybe you've got really sensitive information on there, even on a knackered drive. So what they do is they can allow you to just send the front plate rather than the whole drive. They've got a whole host of service options for you business users. And although it may seem a little bit out of the, sp um, out of the spec of uh, a traditional home user, business users will see a lot of credence with Buffalo's brand, and particularly this Terra Master series, uh, Terra Station series. Um, again, the price on the screen I think is probably about eight or nine hundred nicker, but they do go all the way up to fifteen hundred, two grand, two and a half grand, depending on the number of bays you want, the storage drives inside, or whether you want the Windows server option. So do remember there is a very large range of price threshold for you, depending on what you want. The main reason for me that they've made it into the ten GBE best NAS is, is because they are by far the most affordable for ten GBE and at the amount that they give you as well. So. Other brands do have 10 GB solutions out there, and I do include Synology and QNAP and other brands as well, but very few of them give the support and the kind of rigidity and re robust storage that this Buffalo gave, and that's why it is in second place of my 10 GB NASs of this year. In third place is a Synology, and an old Synology at that. It is the DS1817. Now, straight away, do not get this confused with the Plus Series model, the DS1817 Plus, or in fact, mixed up with the newer one, the DS1819 Plus. This device is no spring chicken. It's at least a year and a half old, maybe even close to two years since it was originally announced. It is not a new NAS, but it is still one of the best 10 GBE NASs out there in terms of affordability. It's uh, available now for about 750 pounds, and it is an eight bay Synology 10 GBE storage device. So why is this frankly old NAS in the best of the 2018? Well, I'm glad you asked. Although there are lots of newer NASs from Synology than this 8-bay, it's worth mentioning that Synology, as I've said before, have a tendency to keep 10 GBE, especially at desktop level, at arm's length. They prefer to have PCIe slots on, so you can um, upgrade as you see fit with like SSD cache cards or 10 GBE or more. But this was one of the first 8-bays they ever released that not only covered 10 GBE base T, in the past always favouring fibre, SFP, but two 10 GBE ports. Now, it's got an Annapurna CPU inside, it's a quad core 1.7 gigahertz CPU, great file handling CPU, even if it's not fantastic for multimedia, so you can forget about the media for this device like Plex and that. And on top of that, four gig of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded to eight or 16, officially or unofficially, depending on how you look at it, and three years of manufacturer's warranty. Now. This 8-bay device still supports the very latest hard drives, all the way up to 14 TB with those Iron Wolf Pros. So you've got a huge option, a huge number of options available to you in terms of RAID. On top of that, you can populate some of the bays with SSDs and create SSD cache pools that will further support and enforce the read and write speeds. But what's really interesting is that there's two 10 GBE ports on the read. You've got two LAN and two 10 GBE ports, 10G base T. The options that this opens to you cannot be understated. Easy first and foremost, you could connect both of them into a 10 GBE switch, effectively via link aggregation, creating 20 gigabit ethernet between the NAS and the network. And the number of cables they use, if they connect via multiple 1 GBEs, they're still gonna see those benefits. Alternatively, you can have the NAS connected via one gigabit ethernet to your network. And those two 10 GBE ports are connected by two video editors, photo editors or more, both of them being able to edit files at 10 gigabit ethernet speeds and then 1GB connectivity for your editors, your metadata, oh, not your editors, uh, the people that do the packaging of your product, um, that do the metadata, the descriptions, the images, the thumbnails, all of that sort of stuff ready for distribution. Um, another alternatively, you can, create, um, you can have one editor connected to this device via 10 GBE and then another 10 GB going to a network switch, and then your metadata, your creators, your packages, so to speak, they have got 10 GB access to the NAS as well. And having those two ports and this 8 bay NAS storage device only costing 700 odd nicker without that, without the hard drive media, is what puts this old NAS into my top three. You could, of course, get the newer generation one, which costs about 700 quid as it is and pop in a two port 10 GBE card. But these are gonna cost you about 200 odd quid and it's gonna cost you way more than just buying this device. 
and that CPU is a good file handling CPU. It's no Intel, which means it's not going to be as good for multimedia concerns, but it's still a great CPU for file transmission and a great CPU for you guys out there trying to reinvent your workflow by introducing 10GBE. It's still available now, it's still a great NAS. Those have been my top three 10GBE NASs to buy here at the end of 2018. Hope you agree. If you didn't, recommend an alternative below. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, click like and subscribe, visit the blog, and I'll see you next time.